Hi everyone, today I wanted to talk about something that's quite technical and that is digital clocking. It's something that not everybody knows about and those who know that it exists don't necessarily know a lot about it, why we need it, what's good and bad and kind of the whole fact that our audio recording lives and also film video recording revolve around clocking. So. Quite simply, what is digital clocking? It's it's uh, it's quite a kind of complicated subject. So let's start with the analog world. In the analog world, in terms of audio, you've got things like tape machines, and you've got mixing desks, and you don't have to worry about them all talking to each other really in terms of timing, because you're sending voltage from one thing, say a tape machine, that gets converted from the tape to voltage and goes out to the mixing desk which then adds that voltage to other voltage on other channels or gets mixed together, that becomes your signal, that goes out and either gets broadcast on radio or stored on another tape or whatever. In the digital world, um, everything operates at what we call the sample rate, uh, which is chosen almost arbitrarily Generally for DVDs and things it's 48 kilohertz, for CD it's 44, there are higher 88.2, 96 and above, and um, maybe we'll talk about that kind of stuff another day, it's something I have covered before, uh, but to make the stuff work, you have to have each piece of equipment running off a digital clock. Now what that means is it's like... A rowing boat. Think about a rowboat that's got, say, eight people doing the rowing. If everybody rows kind of as they feel like, the boat will kind of wibble wobble all over the place and it won't be very efficient and it won't get where it's supposed to be going. So usually you've got someone on that boat called the Cox, who's the tiny little guy who sits at the end and usually you'll see them in cartoons with a big megaphone and they shout, STROKE! 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 And what they are in the digital equivalent is the clock. So there's a piece of equipment which fires off a signal at the right time and every piece of equipment that's connected to it gets the timing go and go and go and that's sped up and up and up and up and up until that becomes 44.1 thousand times a second or 48 thousand times a second or whatever it may be. Um, now, if you've got just something like a two-channel audio interface, uh, like I don't know, an Audion ID4, like I just reviewed, or the Focusrite Claret, that has its own internal clock. It does have a clock, but it runs off its own kind of timing, and you set that in the software and go, you are going to use your own clock, and you're going to do your own thing. And that's the simplest way of digital timing. Now, a question that I've seen around the internet quite a few times, and this is an explanation, is someone might say, oh I've got this audio recorder that was on this side of the room, and this audio recorder that were on that side of the room, and when I've come to put them together, they don't line up. What can I do? I mean, and generally, they'll be very close to begin with, and they'll slowly drift out. Now what's happened there is if they're not connected, physically connected and they don't have a clock synchronizing them, and less expensive digital audio equipment, it kind of, it runs off its own clock separately and they're supposed to be the same, but in practice they're not quite that accurate and they just kind of drift off a little bit. Now if you've just got one recorder and that's all you're doing, hey, it, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Some people will say clocking is important for audio, and maybe it is, but that's that's a separate thing that I'll come on to in a minute. So that's the thing, audio drift is a huge problem in the digital audio world. Um, if you've got two files that don't match, you might have to time stretch one, and that's a real pain in itself because then you get problems. The way to get around it is to have one device that's got a clock output that's a dedicated 
output that will just put out that signal, that stroke, stroke, and the other device, or two or three or however many devices, will receive that and they will link up and they will synchronize so that they'll all capture audio same time, same time, same time, over and over and over. Video guys do this with time code or if they're being really accurate, something called Genlock. And audio guys either do it with a dedicated thing called Word Clock, which is a dedicated channel that just does that, or they'll use an embedded sync, which is actually quite common. So in my studio computer setup, for example, uh, I'm using the RME RADAT inside the computer, and that's just an ADAT interface, and it doesn't have any analog outputs, but it's got tons of digital inputs and outputs. So at the moment, I've got two completely different brand, completely different make sets of audio interface. So one is Focusrite Octo Premark 2 Dynamic, and the other is an Alesis AI. And uh, one is has got preamps in, one doesn't, but that links up to the mixing desk. That's again outside the kind of realms of what I'm talking about today. So for them to be in sync with everything that goes on digitally in here, because I also have my vintage Yamaha desk, and that needs to be synced up. And there is what well, for one of them for the uh, Alesis A that that takes an embedded clock signal that goes in with the audio that gets sent to it from the radar and that goes to the Alesis and that's then set so that that takes that and it doesn't use its own clock it gets given this is the timing you will use and the same for the uh, Octopri that there is a setting on it that you can choose to run it on its own clock or you can choose to run it off an external which is what I've done here. So the, the computer, the RME, is the master clock and the others run off that. Now, I had the choice with the Octopri of using that ADAT embedded signal where it goes, here's a chunk of audio, stroke, here's a chunk of audio, stroke, and that's a way of doing it, but apparently it's not the most efficient way of doing it because the circuitry then has to pick out which bits are the timing, which bits are the audio, and then it's got a possibility of what we call jitter. Jitter is another problem that can come up in clocking because let's say that you have got all these devices connected and they all work together. The next problem is that they might not, depending on the way you've set it up, they might not all pick up the clock signal perfectly on time every time. Sometimes they might be a little busy trying to get the audio out and they might have to try and catch up and then they might fall a little behind. And if it's not perfectly bang on the beat, it's kind of what you call swing in audio. It's called jitter in the digital realm. And the problem arises <laughs> that if everything's not perfectly timed, the samples can be slightly out. And then you get this thing called audio smearing and all sorts of horrible problems. The worst case scenario, if there's loads of jitter or if they're not synced up properly, is you get pops and clicks. You get the kind of audio dropouts where there's this And what's happening there is that generally speaking, if you're getting clicks and pops in the audio, that means that it's kind of the audio synced up near enough, but then there'll be a sample or two samples where they don't line up so it just gives you silence because that's all the machine knows is if, if it's not got any data it must be silence so the difference between that audio and then instant silence and then sound again comes through as a click and that's absolutely going to destroy your audio so in recent years there are two options one which I'm not currently using but I'm looking into is the master clock option now, a master clock is exactly what it says. It's a separate, dedicated clock unit where then everything in the studio will be attached to it and everything will be told you will use this clock signal. And then you've pretty much got 100% guarantee that everything's going to run exactly as it should, when it should, 
and it's going to do what it's told. The other option, and sometimes this happens with things like ADAT interfaces, is jitter recovery. Now a lot of modern digital hardware has uh, this kind of jitter recovery. Older stuff like my Yamaha DMC1000, which is from 1994, 1995, it's got a floppy drive in it for footnotes sake. It's that old that it needs to boot off a floppy drive. It's vintage digital at this point, and the only reason I keep it around, partly it looks cool, and partly it has kind of a bad sound to it that you can kind of use as like digital sound, and I kind of keep it for that kind of whole experimental thing. I don't tend to track through it, because it's a, an old, heavy, not very good sounding beast. But, to keep everything in line, that doesn't have jitter correction, so I'm not expecting absolute fantastic tones from it, and that's kind of the point with that thing, but if I needed pristine audio, which I need in day-to-day -day use, I use the Focusrite stuff. I used to have a Focusrite Liquid Sapphire 56, which I replaced with the Radat as my main interface, just because Firewire has kind of died of death. And I wasn't quite up to Thunderbolt yet, but PCIe and Thunderbolt are analogous, and I went down that route. But anywho, um, Focusrite have this thing called Jet PLL technology, and I think more than one company use it. And the idea is that it can detect when there's something wrong, when there's signal jitter, and it can clean it up. So in a lot of cases, it's not really necessary, as long as you're getting a strong signal, for it to be very low jitter. And jitter recovery technology is particularly important in live sound because a lot of live guys use a technology called MADI, spelled M-A-D-I. MADI is up to 64 channels of audio on one connection, it's either optical or coaxial. And you might run one or maybe two of those signals from the front of house in somewhere like an arena right up to the ceiling or down the floor and all the way back to the mixing desk. That's a long cable with a lot of information on it. And the possibility of that getting kind of quite high jitter is really quite bad. But, like I said, jitter recovery, a lot of that kind of hardware now, can work that out and just smooth it out. And it takes a few samples of latency, but I'm talking literally a few samples of latency, not, not even registerable to the human ear and decent new stuff can work that out. What no? I'll come back to you in a minute. So that's digital clocking and there are so many possibilities and it kind of goes using the internal clock is fine. If you've got a big system generally look at getting a dedicated master clock. Uh, make sure that any hardware that you get if you're not using a master clock or even if you are has jitter recovery so that you're not getting any issues there make sure that if you can you're using word clock because it's infinitely better than using an embedded signal like an SPDIF or ADAT signal and good luck <laughs> it's one of those things that's not that difficult once you've looked at it but if you've never heard of it before there it is in a nutshell hope this has been useful for you so hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already I know from looking at our YouTube stats that we have about 9% of you that watch these that have subscribed and thank you so much for that but there are 90% of you that have not subscribed to the channel and that's really going to help us to grow so if you can hit that sub button even if you don't watch another one of these videos I hope you do but just please hit that sub button and we'll really really appreciate that because that will grow us exponentially and that will help us out also check out our Patreon campaign because we currently have one person supporting us as of filming this video and we could really do with the help. Thanks for watching, I'm Adam Steele for the Hot Pole Studios and I'll see you in the next video.